Space tourism is going to be the big business of the early 21st century. Ten years from now, the market's going to be worth billions. When I started uh, Star Chaser up, you know, there, there's no such thing as space tourism. And I had this wild and wacky idea that one day I was going to build a rocket and fly into space on it. Five years from now, we're going to have stuff flying into space. We're looking at um, things that can help us get uh, people, passengers and cargo back from space uh, very safely and very cheaply. And we're also looking at ways to get those uh, people and, and, and cargoes up there. We're working on some pretty good uh, rocket engines that, uh, well these are the biggest rocket engines to be tested over here in the UK in, in over 30 years. One of the things that we're really looking at right now is uh, using high test peroxide. This is like hydrogen peroxide, the kind of stuff that you might dye your hair with, only very, very strong. Now, the Germans pioneered the use of hydrogen peroxide as a rocket propellant oh, 50 or 60 years ago. And we've kind of picked that ball up and we're, we're like looking at it in detail. Our suborbital space flight is, is it goes straight up and straight down. It takes about 23 minutes. It's like a giant roller coaster. You get to sit on your back, you'll pull about six G's of acceleration initially, and then you, you get into like this weightless period where you'll, you, you'll be able to uh, not float around the cabin, there isn't enough room for that, but you'll, you'll feel weightless, you'll be able to look out of the, the windows and see the curvature of the Earth, the blackness of space, and you truly will become an astronaut for just a few minutes. Uh, the capsule actually comes down tail first. Uh, there'll be quite a bit of deceleration. Again, it'll decelerate, it'll get up to uh, deceleration um, of about six Gs. Pretty soon after that, we deploy a small parachute called a drogue parachute. That'll stabilize the descent and then a much bigger steerable canopy. And we can use that to, to bring the capsule back uh, to a precision landing. Space flight for, for ordinary people is going to become very affordable very quickly. Um, Star Chase, for example, is offering space flights for £98,000 a person. Now, if you really wanted to go into space, most people would be able to maybe remortgage the house and do that flight if that's what they really wanted to do. As the industry opens up, the price is going to come right down. Five or ten years from now, a uh, space flight uh, to a suborbital um, altitude of 100 kilometers or so is going to come down to, to the order of a, about maybe 10,000 pounds. The, uh, the recent accident that uh, happened in the Mojave Desert, I mean, that, that certainly got our attention. And our, you know, uh, our best wishes go out to the, all the people that were affected. Um, that can't be good for the industry when stuff like that happens, but it is expected. You know, we're still in the early phases of private space tourism. Uh, it's, it's like being back in the 1930s when air travel first started. You know, there will be deaths and injuries. Uh, that's unavoidable. Uh, what we've got to do is work together to keep those to a minimum. Um, but I, I don't think it's going to affect the momentum that the industry is gathering. Space tourism is going to happen.